Okay, I did the study on the eastern cottontail rabbit. Um, I see these rabbits a lot around my house and everything, and so I was just interested in learning a little bit more about them. So this is the animal that I chose to do my study on. Um, a little description about these animals. First off, they have kind of a brown or gray-like fur on the dorsal side of their body. Uh, on the underside of their body, they're usually kind of a white color. Uh, that is where they get their cottontail name from um, because they do have a little puffy white underside to them and it extends all the way out to their tail. Um, these cottontails can be found in most of eastern United States and they can also be found in parts of New Mexico, Texas, and Arizona. Some of the foods that the cottontail eats, they are herbivores, so they do eat a variety of different types of plants. They prefer grasses, clovers, fruits, and vegetables. Uh, when the time is right, uh, when there's a lot of those grassy ve vegetation, this is what they eat. Um, during the winter, though, when there's less vegetation, they will eat some woody parts of plants like twigs or branches or the bark of some of our trees like the oak, the dogwood, or the maple tree. Um, they prefer the green grassy vegetation most of the time, but if they can't get it or they can't find it, then they'll resort to the woody parts of plants. Habitat. The eastern cottontail does prefer a kind of woody area that is pretty close to some open land, some open grassy area. They also prefer bushy areas um, or fields next to those bushy areas. And they also have been found in swamps and woodlands as well. Uh, the picture here is an example of a burrow of an Easter cottontail rabbit. As you see, it's probably above it. Um, there's probably a lot of grassy, uh, brushy area there. Uh, and then further out, it's probably near some open land where there's lots of vegetation. Okay, this map here shows basically the dispersion of the Eastern cottontail rabbit. And you notice it is pretty much the predominant rabbit in the United States. It does cover the majority of the United States. Uh, so uh, it was another reason, one of the reasons I wanted to study it was just kind of get more knowledge about this rabbit. Home range, uh, they do like, again, shrubs and woody vegetation to escape cover from their predators. They like it to be dense. They like it to be kind of thorny if possible. Their home range does vary depending on their habitat, so if they have a good habitat, they're not going to have a big home range. Uh, on average, females have seemed to have a 5 to 15 acre home range, and males have been known to have one as much as 100 acres, and that's probably due to reproductive strategies on the male's part. The eastern cottontail is also a solitary animal, and it's also very territorial. So if you see a couple of these rabbits together, they're probably fighting for territory, or they're probably fighting for some females for reproduction. My study sites. Uh, the first site was in Castleville, Texas, right across the road from my house. A uh, big green open grassy area and one was, uh, with good vegetation, so I wanted to see if I'd find a lot of fecal piles there in this area. The second site was southeast side of was southeast of site one, about five to seven miles at the regional park in Castorville, near a river. I wanted to see if um, people traffic through this area because there's a lot of people that go through this park to see if that has an effect an effect or an impact on uh, fecal piles of the rabbits in this area. And also in site three, that's what I was looking for as well, and that's about an hour. Of northwest of Castorville in a town called Bandera and I looked at the Mayan Dude Ranch so there's a lot of people traffic there, a lot of ranch animals like horses and cattle and so I wanted to see if that all had an impact on keeping these rabbits away from that area or if it didn't have an impact at all and there was going to be the same amount of fecal piles there and I did a strip transect index to measure out these fecal piles. Again, these are the Google Earth Map sites that I chose. So the top one is a site right across the road from my house. And you notice it's a big green grass area. Not a lot of people go there. Site 2, another big open green grassy area for these rabbits. Uh, there's quite a bit of people traffic here, so I wanted to see if that had an impact on it. And also site 3 is ideal because it's got the brushy area and then the open land. And uh, But it does have a lot of people traffic and it does have a lot of ranch animals there. So I wanted to see if that had an impact on these rabbits being there. Okay, so these pictures here, they basically show um, like the habitat of the cottontail rabbit. 
Um, as you notice, kind of a brushy area this top picture is, and then it's got this big open area of grassy vegetation that these rabbits like to eat. So that's kind of the ideal area for these rabbits. Uh, the bottom picture, again, is just an example of the fecal piles that I was looking to study uh, to see, kind of get an idea of the population of the rabbits. And then the bottom right picture, just an example of one of their burrows uh, or their houses where they live at. So the results that I got, um, so I went to these three different sites. I went uh, for six days. I probably could have done longer, um, but with time constraints, I was only able to go for six days. Uh, you'll notice at site one, there was a lot of fecal piles of this cottontail rabbit, so uh, that was kind of interesting, being that it was undisturbed area and things like that. And site two kind of showed uh, kind of a mixture. I guess maybe it depended on maybe how many people were there that day or if it got disturbed by other animals or things like that. And then site three, you can see there's very few fecal piles there. Um, I think maybe either because there's a lot of human traffic there or possibly but just because it got disturbed or picked up and brushed away by other animals. So you'll see at site one there were a lot more fecal pellets than at the other sites. Uh, maybe probably due to undisturbed area by people. Site 2, there were still quite a bit of fecal piles, but less than Site 1. Um, and that could have just been through a disturbance of people through there or, uh, you know, other animals messing with the fecal piles. And then Site 3 had very few fecal piles, and I think that had to do with a lot of high people traffic and ranch animals there. And those were some of the references I have.